Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again, my YouTube channel. Um, today I'm uh, celebrating one of my favourite songwriters and I've prepared a little playlist which I know some of you have already looked at because uh, there's 35 likes on it already, which I was unexpected when I looked at that today. But it's called Do Ron 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 and uh, is a collection of my favourite moments from the career and oeuvre of uh, Ron Sexsmith, Canadian singer-songwriter. Justin Hawkins writes again, again. Ah, yeah. So, uh, whilst we were on tour uh, last month or the month before that, or whenever it was, beginning of this year, 2022, um, I had the possibility. And the great pleasure, in fact, of seeing Ron Sexsmith doing one of those sort of an evening with Ron Sexsmith events um, at a theatre in Vancouver. And I, I've loved his songs for a long time. I always hold up Ron Sexsmith as the benchmark for songwriters. And I feel like if you're trying to write emotive songs that are crafted and fought out and have have actual rhymes that work and make perfect sense, whether in the written form or sung, then, you know, you can do a lot worse than asking yourself, what would Ron Sexsmith do? In fact, that's actually how I approach songwriting. I don't, I'm not suggesting that I'm in the same league as Ron Sexsmith. I don't think I am. I think he's out there on his own, uh, a modern classic. Um, and he writes modern classics. I think that's the best way to describe his songs, really. I'm going to read you a few facts about him just to sort of give you an idea of who we're talking about. Um, he was uh, the singer, sorry, he was the songwriter of the year at the 2005 Juno Awards. And the Junos are something like the uh, Canadian Grammys or the Canadian Brits, the Canadians, if you will. He began releasing recordings of his own material in 1985 at the age of 21 and he's made 15 albums. Um, he started his own band when he was 14 years old. Um, he's collaborated with many artists, including... Uh, Leonard Cohen and Chris Martin. Um, his songs have been performed and recorded by a number of well-known musicians, including Elvis Costello, Feist, Rod Stewart and uh, Emmy Lou Harris. So, you know, he's been around a while. He's made a lot of stuff. And uh, I just think there are a few people who can write a song as good as what he does. That's really all I can say about it. I'm going to play you like the first few bars as I understand them, of um, of Secret Hearts before we get into the... Where's, where did I put my headphones? Guys, have you seen them? Where are they? It's underneath a t-shirt. <laughs> That's why. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Right. Secret Heart, I never used to... It's I used to think it was that. But this bit here, I was wrong about that. I was, having seen Ron Sexsmith live now, I, I know that it's it's minor. So he goes. Secret heart, what are you made of? What are you so afraid of? Could it be? Three simple words Or oh, the fear of being overheard What's wrong? Let her in on your secret heart um, I put that one on the, the uh, playlist first Just because it's, it's probably his most well-known song I would say I think it's the one that comes up first if you look at uh, look at Ron Sexsmith on a streaming site not that you would need to do that you're going to go and buy the records trust me on that secret heart what are you made of what are you I don't think I've ever watched a, a Ron Sexsmith video as such. I just, I just, he's the guy that I listen to in real life. I actually use my ears. Um, the next song that I chose is uh, from the same record, the eponymous uh, Ron Sexsmith album, one of my favourites. Um, and it's called The Words We Never Use. I always get a slight sort of Bee Gees vibe from it. It sounds like he's using a, 
a kind of loop at the beginning. And and I really love his guitar playing. It's, it's, it's a good sort of country-style picker. Um, it's not my area of expertise, but it, it's something like this. Hang on. Something like that. But this is the interesting... I don't know what, don't know what that chord is. It's like a... What is that chord? I suppose it's a G, but it has... Um, oh, it's that, isn't it? It's a G with a G sharp in it, I think. I'm not sure, but it's... It, anyway. It's that kind of curveball that, that that separates him from one of those kind of super traditional um, free chords and the truth guys. You know, I think if you went into certain studios in the Nashville region and asked them to perform a chord like that, they would look at you like you'd shat in their sandwich, and they would say, "Get out." Um, but I think that's probably one of the reasons why Canadian music is always. Unhindered by the tropes of, uh, of the genres that they operate in, really. I don't know, it can't be a coincidence that a lot of my favourite songwriters are Canadian. Can it? Brian Adams, Ron Sexsmith, who else do I like? Leonard Cohen, is, is he a. Well, he's a Canadian, isn't he? I don't know. Who cares? Love knows no boundaries. Anyway, the words we never use. I can't understand this sadness here. Can't understand this sadness. Here. Listen to the way he the rhymes land in a, in a Ron Sexsmith song, and 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 the way I think. I just think the way he approaches lyrics is really impressive. Him and uh, Richard Thompson are among the best at, at that, really, um, because you can see the, the prose written on a sheet of paper, and it'll blow you away just how clever the how clever the poetry is, really. To that, uh, another thing that speaks to that is uh, the next song that I chose. It's called "This Song," um, and it's from the album Blue Boy, um, and it's one of those things where he's taken that trope that people always say, "Oh, you know." How can you expect me to choose my favourite song? They're my babies, you know, and he's, he's developed that uh, allegory to within an inch of its life where he says, you know, brought a song into this world, just a melody with words. It trembles here before my eyes. How can this song survive? And so he's sort of talking about, I don't know, like from the conception of a, of a, crea piece, of, a piece of creativity, like a bit of art and how you get that over the line and realise it um, as a song and then you put it into the world and then wait for it to get shot down by the critics, your label partners and everyone else in the in the process. And I think it still works as an allegory for parenthood. It's brilliant. Um, I think he, he's uh, explored that and taken it to its natural conclusion. Brought a song into this world Just a melody Another song from um, that same record, Blue Boy, is Cheap Hotel. It's a beautiful thing to listen to because of the melodies, but uh, but I really love the way um, he's sort of talking about um, the abuse, an abusive relationship, and a woman is has left home and she's brought her children with her and they're staying in this cheap hotel. Um, that's one of the verses, and then the next verse talks about some of the abuses themselves. Um, but then because he finishes that verse by referring to the hotel, you almost think, well, so has she escaped or has this person that she's trying to escape from joined her in the hotel? Or is this an, an entirely different relationship where the abuses are occurring under the same roof as the people who are trying to escape from it, but they're different? I don't know. Um, but because th because the refrain is talking about God bless this cheap cheap hotel or God damn this cheap hotel, it's, it's really like the geography of where these things are taking place is is it's just a backdrop for all these emotions and it's like I don't know it's really clever it's cinematic she told him this is our home for now God bless 
Chester's Cheap Hotel. And then the last one I put on this uh, playlist is Summer Blowing Town. Um, I, I only included it because Blowing Town, I suppose, is talking about the way you feel at the end of, the end of summer. Let's stand in here to witness summer blowing town. I don't think blowing town is an expression that anybody in England has ever used before, so it's kind of exotic to me. Um, but and I, and I really love there's a, there's there's a couple of verses and then there's a guitar solo after a sort of C section, not the cesarean operation too, N- not that. Um, uh, where it goes back to the verse and then there's a, there's a kind of really interesting acoustic stringed instrument solo that takes takes the place of what would normally be a traditional verse straight into pre-chorus and refrain. Um, the arrangements are really clever on his stuff. The lyrics are really moving. And the melodies are ace. I love him as a singer. I think he's a great guitar player and he's a beautiful pianist as well. Um, this should serve as an introduction uh, to Ron Sexsmith. Um, I'll probably talk about him again in a future episode just because I love him so much and there's so many things that he's done that are worth talking about. Um, but if you weren't aware of him before... You're welcome. Listen to the eponymous record. Have a look at my playlist, but you should go and explore the records that these songs came from. Justin Hawkins writes again, again. This was a difficult one to do because I care so much about Ron Sexsmith. I was wearing this denim shirt with scarf. It was a mistake. It's hot here. Can't think. But enjoy, and I will see you on the ice. Uh, um, do Ron Ron. Uh, the link to this uh, playlist will be in the biography, uh, no, in the description. Um, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of these two videos, and enjoy.